Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Trail Talk. Trail Talk. Yeah, we're <laughs> we are live uh, here at the uh, Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Duncan, Oklahoma, and I'm Edie. And this is my very special guest and friend, Julie McKinney. Welcome to Trail Talk, Julie. Thank you, Edie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You guys might recognize Julie. She's been on a couple of times. I was thinking the very first time you came on and you taught us about um, uh, Dutch oven, the Dutch ovens, and and, the, and campfire cooking and, on the on the uh, trail yep. kind of thing. Yep. And, uh, what was that like? Chuck wagon cooking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> chuck wagon cooking. It. You know what? We might struggle back and forth a little <laughs> bit like this today. I'll just tell you guys straight up. <laughs> this could be a, a deal. Um, <laughs> it's not a deal. It's okay. It's okay. It's yeah. Okay it's, yeah. yeah. There you go. Uh, anyway, Julie um, is serves on the board here at the Heritage Center, which is such a great thing for you to do, Julie. Um, I mean, for a, a nonprofit organization like the Heritage Center to be able to function properly, to have someone, um, you know, watching over the people, those of us who work here and just kind of helping us um, stay on track and keep a vision out there and all those things. You guys support us so well. Yeah. And it's just, it's just so great to um, have you and the other board members uh, serving. They're, they're all volunteers. And it just, it means a lot um, to those of us who work here to have people like you um, well, serving you. on our board. Yeah, yeah, we really do appreciate you. It, you know, what being on the board for the this facility, I mean, you have to have a passion for history. Mm. And in, in my youth, I wasn't a very good historian, but when I moved to Duncan and to Oklahoma, the Chisholm Trail was, Everybody knows about the Chisholm Trail, everybody. Mm -hmm. And it has such a um, uh, importance from our past and also into the future because it shows the ingenuity of how cowboys and their beef got all the way to New York. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that that's pretty amazing. It kind of shows what Oklahoma is all about. Yes. You know? yes. And the Chisholm Trail does that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what's exciting about it. The other thing too is um, we have some good people that work here. Yeah. I'm not just saying that just because you're here. But. <laughs> yeah, but I thank you. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to be on the board here. So um, I appreciate it. Yeah, well, we, we really, um, we appreciate it because like things like we're gonna be talking to you about today, um, planning events, kind of setting our calendar up for the coming year. Uh, you know, it's just, it's exciting. And it's so great to have, like, the, we have this events committee now. <laughs> and it's so nice to have the that group of people working together and kind of just giving us things to look forward to as the year goes, you know, the above and beyond just our daily um, I say just, but our, you know, our daily at regular the, between schools and our visitors who come, you know, it's really nice to hold events here. This facility is yeah. just, so, yes, it's beautiful. And so uh, it, it has so much history and so much art that I love being able to share it on those special event days. And uh, just to kind of, you mentioned the Chisholm Trail, you know, some of our days are very focused on the cowboy or the trail or, you know, those parts of it. And then other uh, events, events that we have are more about the community mm -hmm. or the arts. And, you know, we just, I love it that we um, have really gotten outside the box and, and we uh, make, we're making ourselves kind of a, a, a center for arts and history, both. Yep. you know, combined. And I kind of feel like that was probably a part of the vision of the McCaslin, Mr. McCaslin and, and putting this together because of the Garris Gallery that we have here. You know, that so such an amazing art collection. It is amazing. And, I, and having people come here, uh, you know, and, and you don't realize what you have in the city most of the times you know mm -hmm. most of the time you want to go to oklahoma city or to tulsa or something like that to visit and to see what you have available that's exciting 
And a lot of people don't realize what we have here. Right. It is, you know, we it's celebrate the cowboy way of life, but you're right. The Garris Gallery is a new, it's not new, it's a, a, a way of celebrating the cowboy way of life mm -hmm. in art. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it's, you need to come see it. That's all. <laughs> exactly. It's just amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing. And um, so we're going to, we're going to go through the our our these days i think you kind of have to say our um projected or potential calendar <laughs> of events because uh things are happening they've been happening for two years and um it's it uh you you just have to be flexible you just have yeah. to be flexible and roll with it and all the events that we've had over the past two years um every participant and every visitor has just been so great about being willing to um you know take extra precaution mm -hmm. or let's just let's just stay outside all day no matter yep. how hard the wind is blowing <laughs> you know that people are willing to do those things uh just to spend time together or just to celebrate western life or art or whatever and so i'm i'm excited to see and so you guys getting a sneak peek that's right you are the first to hear but about to all the fun things we have on paper to tell me <laughs> well you know they just met a couple of days ago so um we're going to talk about the events and the exhibits coming up for 2022 and the first thing we're going to talk about is our cowboys and cobblers event we have that scheduled for april the 9th and so tell us about that. We had one last year, but we kind of had to change it. Yes. <laughs> At the last minute, it was one of those um, so, flexibility kind of things. But tell us what we'd like to, this is what our dream is. This is what we'd like to do this year. Okay, so we're gonna have our poets, okay? Cowboy poets. And, and also uh, an art walk too. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, and we didn't have that last year. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of new for, uh, uh, since last year. The other thing that we're doing, we have, I'll call it Cowboys and Cobblers. And um, last year we had a chuck wagon mm -hmm. offering free cobbler. And it was right. really good, by the way. I just yes. want to let you know that. Yeah. Uh, but this year, I think we're going to change it around a little bit. I, uh, what we're going to do is have um, a cobbler competition. Okay. And so that involves the whole area the whole county if they want to mm -hmm. uh, and show off their cooking skills it doesn't have to be off of a chuck wagon it doesn't have to be in um, a dutch, a dutch oven. oven or anything like that just bring your cobbler and we're going to have judges and oh. we're going to offer a prize fun yes. very fun and i guess there'll be categories well and we're still kind of working out working out those yeah. details yeah. okay Okay. Um, but please, you know, uh, try to come and, and bring your favorite cobbler. That is that is fun. Cobbler, man, I love <laughs> cobbler. I love all kinds of cobblers. The kind that's made with like the pie crust, yes. the kind that's more cakey. Yeah. You know, I mean. And some of it's just sugar and, yeah. and, and butter. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, just, I don't know, the fruit and the, the hot fruit uh -huh. with whatever the the British part of it, you yeah. know, that carb layer that goes with it. Man, and I bring guess gonna, it on. Yeah, I guess we're going to have some coffee too. Oh, you got to have some good old black coffee to wash that down with. Well, that sounds like a very fun event. April, it's typically pretty nice. And last year, it was a it was little really bit, yeah. yeah, it was a little cool in sunny. the shade. Yeah, but the sun was out. It was a nice day. It yeah. really was. And, I mean, you can tell by these pictures. Yeah um that it and it was a it was a fun day so put that on your calendar guys april the 9th we i i know that there are going to be other things that are happening but these dates were selected looking at least our the community calendar yeah. so we're not you know being on top of something else that's already scheduled so it'll be a saturday i'm guessing saturday, yep and it, it like she said it's going to be on a ducking calendar we're trying to put mm -hmm. all our events on there so that uh people know and uh, when to come yeah and what time and maybe uh you can just take take a look at the ducking calendar and see what's going on yeah yeah so anyway uh cowboys and cobblers i love i love that that sounds like a perfect day 
Okay, the next big day we have scheduled is in July, National Day of the Cowboy. And that's always, is it the fourth Saturday? Yes. The fourth Saturday in July. And um, usually it coincides, if you're familiar, if you have anything to do with the band or bicycles, you know that typically it's the same day as the dehydrator. Yes. But this year it won't be because the dehydrator is always the last Saturday in July. Oh, I and there'll be another Saturday. It sure is. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So uh, you can do both events <laughs> <laughs> this year because they will be on different days. So National Day of the Cowboy, this is not just something that happens here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center or even just in Duncan. In fact, um, last year on Trail Talk, we um, interviewed the lady who kind of started the National Day oh, of the Cowboy. Really see that. Yes, oh. uh, it's really it's really a good one. And of course, I cannot think of her name right now. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm apologizing right now because I can't remember your name. But um, anyways, it's like they have events even around the world celebrating the cowboy um, because of this uh, celebration that she started and it's been going on for a number of years and that we have um usually because it's july we have everything indoors and um this year uh oh, i forgot to grab that flyer um this year yeah. we are um it's the, on the front door it's front yellow door. yeah thank you tina um this year uh galen and missy are going to be here performing. Now you guys will recognize Galen and Missy um, if we say the Cowboy Opry Band, yes. because they have come here and they have been uh, provided music for the National Day of the Cowboy for I don't know how many years. Uh, the Cowboy Opry Band was Alan Wooten along with Galen and Missy. And sadly we lost Alan, yes. just, uh, a just month ago, I think, recently. yeah, it was about a month ago is all, and um, very sad. He was one, in fact, he's a good supporter of this museum. I, I really think that he was our, my very first guest on Trail Talk. Alan, Alan. Alan. Oh, he came so. on and he performed songs by himself. He came and played some music and said, I'm getting, I'm getting a little emotional talk, yeah. thinking about it. Um, but anyway, Alan uh, has gone on to heaven and uh, left a, a big void here. Um, but Alan and Missy, uh, last year for National Day of the Cowboy, his wife Sue was very sick and he yeah. was not able to be here to play, but they came and uh, played. A lot of family issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a rough year. But anyway, um, while we're talking about Alan, just for a second, I'm gonna get away from yep. our celebration and tell you about something that's happening this weekend on uh, Saturday from four to 10 at um, the Stevens County Fairgrounds in the Prairie Room. There's gonna be live music and a dance benefit for Allen's family. And um, they'll have door prizes, silent auction, a raffle for an acoustic guitar. Cowboy Opry musicians will go on at four and then David Halliburton Peace and the Peace Wagon Band, Joe Hopkins and Driving South, all big names for this area mm -hmm. uh, as far as musicians go. They're all performing Saturday. Um, and it is $12 per person or $20 per couple. And all the proceeds are going to go to the family to help cover. Um, they've just endured so many uh, health Issue. When when I say Sue was his wife was sick, she was sick in another state. Yep. Um, and so anyway, um, we are so sad that Alan is gone. But what a great way to pay tribute to one of uh, the area's just greatest contributors as far as music and family and you know just all of those things that he represented. He used to have the um, get-togethers down at their their store down in in Comanche. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, uh, if you've ever been to one of their gatherings, I don't know that all those musicians come in and just start. Yeah, yeah, playing. they just yeah. sit around and play together, yeah. and pe it's like a potluck. It, yeah. This is how it was. It was at the Cowboy Opry, uh, there, uh, just as in you Comanche, on, yeah. and yeah, right in Comanche, Street, yeah. and um, it was like every Thursday night yep. 
or something yeah. like that for I don't even know how long. But anyway, um, if you if you knew Alan or if he or the Cowboy Opry or anything, you know, touched your life in any way, go out to the fairgrounds yeah. this Saturday and, um, you know, give a little back give a little bit back for their family. But um, National Day of the Cowboy, Galen and Missy will be here to play. And we have uh, little craft things for the kids and just all kinds and of things stuff. going on. Yeah. We usually <laughs> have um, someone like our Tina reading books to kids. Uh, we just have a lot of fun things. So National Day of the Cowboy, and it's free admission all day. And then so I do get have to see the whole... Uh, facility too, yes. and see the the, the movies, movies and, and yeah. the campfire yep. theater and all of that. So yeah, National Day of the Cowboy, it's great. And sometimes there are things going on um, around the community, so you can hit more than one. Yep. So just um, just be watching your calendar for that as well. Uh, Texoma gives. There's my cohort, Mary, right there. She is going to love it when she sees this picture. I haven't heard her scream yet, so maybe she's not watching. I don't know. <laughs> but Texoma Gives is, is our single largest fundraising day of the year for the Heritage Center. And as I mentioned before, we are a, a nonprofit organization. And so we are supported by memberships, uh, donations, and, of course, there's a a charge at the door, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we have a gift shop that where there are some sales, but I mean, our, you have to have online. Yeah. Online. Yeah. On, you, online, online, there, yeah. yeah um, as well, but, um, and then um, grants, things like that. That's mostly though, the grant money really is mostly for our education program. Yes. But anyway, so we are any money that we raise, it, it goes into running this facility and keeping it um, in good shape. Do me a favor, uh, talk about your uh, education program too, because that's a big deal here. Right, okay, yeah, so- It um, is, a, it is. It, and yeah, Texoma Gives does, yeah. it goes to support, almost all the money we raise that day goes to support mm -hmm. the education program, actually, I think. So our education program, um, we are a, we're considered a, an actual classroom, a certified classroom, um, under the great expectations guidelines and um, which is a pretty big deal. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah, there are uh, we have we are evaluated every year to make sure that we're following all of the great expectations expectations. <laughs> and um, anyway, so we keep that certification up. The teachers go through training and um, so so schools bring come here for field trips. And when they come, we teach uh, science, technology, engineering, art, and math, as well as history. And there's always uh, someone who tells a story about the, uh, the theme of our session. And, um, and then we also um, have our two theaters that they're able to participate in. Uh, when COVID started, we switched gears and we now have virtual field trips. So uh, we are actually able to reach students who didn't have enough time to drive to Duncan and get back to school in that short period of time. And so we kind of broadened our reach, so to speak. And um, those kids, they don't get to do the theaters, but they are, are able to receive all of the same educational proponents that we have on a regular field trip. I mean, we send all of the art uh, supplies that they need to do whatever the art project is to the school. And so the kids are even doing the art project. That's awesome. In addition, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we have, I'm gonna say pre-COVID numbers, we were 10 or 11,000 students a year. A lot. Yeah, coming through the door and experiencing our education program. And um, I mean, it it really is, I'm, I feel like I'm you know giving myself a pat on the back because I'm lucky enough to be a part of our education program, but it really is a full day of learning for the kids, but they do it. I always say, um, I know a lot of our procedures sound like you're at school, but we're way more fun yes, in school. Fun. If, you've, if, if, you, if you ever come to uh, the museum, 
and come during the day when they're having a school, it is it's cool to watch all those kids. They're yeah. just having a great time. So. Yes, that is for sure. <laughs> and we even teach in the summer. Yeah. We have daycares who come. We uh, homeschool organizations. Too, yes, I, I dress up. I'm the one who was the character who tells the story. <laughs> um, but then we usually just put our regular clothes on after that. <laughs> Anyway, it is a super fun, and thank you for letting me brag about yeah, that, because <laughs> Texoma Gives is like our number one way that we support that education program. So um, it's it's great. We, we don't have the date yet for that, but the last couple of years, we were, we were able to use our um, kind of trail talk set up yeah. to um, do like a full day of things. It's usually the beginning of September yes, sometime. Yes, yeah. that's, yes, yeah. that is correct. Um, trail Talk is actually another part of our education program that's that true. we added as since uh, <laughs> the pandemic started, just as a way to kind of stay relevant and keep ourselves out there in front of people. And it really grew into what it is today, which I, I it's so great. We love all of you viewers who support us. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's Mary giving the old armadillo a <laughs> smoochy smooch. Um, do not, not do again. not do this. <laughs> and he is real, but he's not alive. Um, and I, he gives me the creeps, the heebie-jeebies, he's because cool. he's got weird hair that grows out of those scales on his belly, and it just grosses me out to the max. But um, we have do not do that. Armadillos <laughs> carry diseases, so don't really do that. This guy's been dead a while. My my dog likes armadillos. Oh so yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. I'm sure. Well, hey, speaking of speaking dogs, of dogs yeah. Western Spirit. Um, that that's a celebration that we had in the past, mm -hmm. and. It, it kind of, we dropped doing it, dropped it. Yep. and now we picked it back up last year. We had it in September last year. Oh, we had August. August. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it was hot. August. It was hot. Yes. It was super hot yeah. that day. Um, but uh, so Western amazing. Spirit, yeah, we're changing it to October 1st this year, hoping for a much more pleasant day. But um, it was so, such a fun, cool day. You know, it was interesting too. We weren't sure what the response was after it being gone for such a long mm -hmm. time, but we had a lot of people show up. We had five chuck wagons, four chuck wagons, four chuck wagons, and yeah. they were all um, competing against one another mm -hmm. about how be best the chuck wagon was. Their beans, their cobbler. Speaking of cobbler, yeah, and uh, biscuits, biscuits, and their meat, and their meat. Yes. Uh -huh. So they all kind of competed each other, and, and surprisingly, everybody got one. Yeah, That's it all, it all worked out. Everyone kind of excelled on one of those. One of these things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they were. It was kind of cool. Is that it shows you how the uh, trail people did and cooked at their chuck wagon, mm -hmm. which was pretty amazing because you got to think when they're going down the trail, they don't have a market that they can go to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they have to have uh, canned food. They call them air tights, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the canned food uh, or bags of flour and the accoutrements for that. And every once in a while, if a cow dies, they might have some meat. Mm -hmm. Uh, they might have some um, uh, fruit off the tree or something as they're going mm -hmm. down the road. But, you know, it kind of shows you how important it, that cook was. Right. The cook did everything. He even pulled teeth. And yeah. Was the, uh, but yeah. He, he knew, knew what he was doing. Yes, for time. sure. And the only time that... Uh, um, uh, that the, the cook is probably was the most important person because if you have happy cowboys and that cook makes those cop, uh, cowboys happy, then you have good cowboys too. Yeah. So it yeah, kind of that's true. And I important. mean, they're they're just out there working yeah. so hard every day. A good hearty meal yep. is going to keep them keep them going. Yeah. But besides the chuck wagons, which here's one of the guys, yeah. he's <laughs> tasting <laughs> some of his stuff, making sure it's on but we also had some working cow this dogs. was so cool mm -hmm. did you were you able to well see i was working a booth okay. a, a little a craft booth kind of far away so i didn't get to see all of that but this guy tells this dog by words that's only what to do 
And that dog is so focused on the cows that he'll do anything that this guy will tell you, tell him to do. It's just, it was amazing. It's just oh, absolutely wow. amazing. Wow. Um, and we had some longhorns, didn't we? Yep. Just kind of, they were kind of wandering around out. in that grassy area. Um, yeah. It was, we had, what, what is the cowgirl's uh, name that uh, won? Uh, what was Katie? Katie. Katie. Uh, Gordon? Yeah, Katie Gordon. Katie Gordon. Yeah, she was there helping with the uh, with the Longhorns too mm -hmm. on a horse, and so you could go up and talk to her and stuff. And then we had music. Yes, and yeah, we had performers. Uh, Wallace Moore, who's yep. the historian. Uh, he was. Uh, he dresses up. He's an interpreter. Man, <laughs> he's he's so great to listen to him share stories. But yeah, we had the Indian dancers. We had yes, uh, Native, Native American, American dancers. Yeah. I mean, we. It was a full slate yeah. of really fun things going on that day. I would really suggest you come to at, at least this because mm -hmm. it has anything that you like about Western heritage was here. True. Yeah. That and this focuses a lot more on kind of trail life. Yes. Than yes. Uh, than like National Day of the Cowboy Day. Exactly. So exactly. um yeah, this gives you a different kind of a different look. Um, Tina found the name Bethany Braley is the lady who started the National Day of the Cowboy. Oh, events. okay. Yeah, right. her name is Bethany Braley. Thank you very much, Thank Tina. Um, okay, now, okay, we don't have any pictures of this one. The Halloween Haunted Campfire is something new that we're going to do this year, and we have already got some kind of scary things. Well, uh, can I mention something? Yes. There is one of, of the, the guys that work here, uh -huh. Bailey, uh -huh. that is just freaking out about ha Halloween and pumpkins. Mm -hmm. So if you ever want to talk to one of the <laughs> girls here about pumpkins, talk to Bailey. <laughs> Ask her. <laughs> Shout out to Bailey. Yeah, uh, so we're going to, um, we don't like, we don't have details, but no. just be watching because I don't want to give anything away and I don't want to say anything that we haven't worked out yet, but this is going to be a, a very fun event that we're going to I bet you're going to have something about, on trail talk about that. Event. I bet you're right. <laughs> We will definitely make sure you know about the haunted campfire. So that's going to be a very fun thing that we do. Um, and then we're going to have raining in the arts, which this will be our third raining in the arts. Yeah, and th this has really become um, a quite an, a, a great day, I feel like, um, in the life of the Heritage Center. I think so too. It, it is, here we have, um, so uh, in the past we've had uh, three different performance areas, and, um, but I think we're going to go to two for okay, this, this one this one. year. This yeah, this, this courtyard one here, it was a little bit kind of behind things, and I don't know, we just, anyway, we're going we're gonna to try to do something a little bit different and make, hopefully we can still accommodate the number of performers yes. that we have um, who want to come because we have had just such an array of talent um, who have come and performed here. Not to mention um, last year we uh, in, had our whole big room at the back of the Heritage Center full of artists and they had art for sale yes. that day and I mean people with from sculptors to painters to photographers to like a work wood burn kind of thing to, I mean so, it was very cool there was jewelry there was there were all kinds of things here that day so I mean mark reigning in the arts because if you're not that much into the West or cowboy or whatever, this is the day for you yeah. um, because we have something for everyone here. Everyone on that yes. day, I we've had just so many. And different as places. she was explaining this, you'll know that um, every year they they fix some of these events and make it better mm -hmm. in. Uh, more likable for the artists as mm -hmm. well as for the patrons that come in too. True. So we just don't leave it and then we'll just do it this way. Right. And say, yeah, that was good enough. Yeah. We really are always looking for ways to improve. Always. Yeah. And and so I, I appreciate you mentioning that because that is important for folks to know that we're always 
kind of looking for new ways. And listen, if you have attended any of the events that we've been talking about today, and there was something that you wish had happened, I mean, or an idea that you have, leave a, leave a comment for us because we would love to hear back from you. Yes. And, um, you know, if there was something you really liked, let us know. At, you know, because maybe that's something we were looking at changing or something. So anyway, it's always good for us to hear back from you. You know, we would love to do that. Um, and so those, as far as events that are going to be, you know, mark your calendar for these things. These, this is uh, the last of those. But we also have featured artists, as you guys know, um, you saw uh, Polly Thurston and Kelly Yarborough. They were on Trail Talk last week. And so you saw their art, you know that they're here um, through the end of February. And then in March, we have Youth Art Month, which is such a great time. Yeah, yeah, it's so awesome. Uh, so this is a time for students from the area. I mean, we have kids from Elgin and from uh, Fame Academy and from the high schools, local high schools, and it just, all kinds of uh, anyone who creates art and uh, even homeschool students mm -hmm. can participate in this. And we put everyone's art out in our featured artist part of the gallery. It is just full of these art of art that students have created, and we have a reception for them. And, and let me it's, tell you something. Going to that, these kids. This isn't just kids art. Let me tell oh, you something. Oh, no, no, no. These, th these are really amazing. You, mm -hmm. you look at this and, wow. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> there, there is a lot of talent yes. that you will see when you come. And um, just having that reception for them and giving them that opportunity to think, to experience something that a, a more professional artist mm -hmm gets to experience, I, I mean, some of these, it's just that maybe we're just tending that seed yeah, that's planted in them. Awesome coming mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, we love Youth Art Month around here and that's always in the, the month of March. And um, so, uh, and then April through June, we will have a featured artist and we've had to change um, the, uh, we, anyway, we're kind of in a limbo Right now, we we think we might have someone booked for that time, but we're kind of working on that. So we're going to let that be a surprise to you. Of course, we'll to be yeah, determined. To be determined, we'll <laughs> we'll let you know. We don't we don't leave you guessing too much. And then uh, July, August, and September will be Jilly Jones. Jilly, formerly Bethany Jones. Um, Jilly is a photographer. She's been on Trail Talk a couple of times. And so she'll have her work here for you to come and see. And um, it's uh, her husband, Clancy, is a singer songwriter and he has performed. He's been on Trail Talk and he was at Raining in the Arts mm -hmm. um, last year. So anyway, she's from the area too. Yeah, right? she is from the area. Yeah. And so they're very talented couple and we're excited to have Jilly's photography here. She takes some pretty cool skis. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. And then last, the last artist for be October through December of this year is Mike Larson. Now, Mike Larson is, um, I know you have seen his works. If you've ever been to the state capitol and you've seen the big portrait of the five ballerinas, the Native American ballerinas, sometimes they're referred to as the five stars. Uh, that portrait, that painting was done by Mike Larson. He is um, a Native American and lives here in Oklahoma. And we're very excited to have him here. We have, we actually have a couple of books that are out right now for, for your viewing pleasure. Um, if you came and visited the Heritage Center and we'll have those out uh, for a couple of months because we consider him to be one of our history heroes here uh, <laughs> because he's just, I mean, he's just really left a mark in the art world. And he's a, a bit of a, a um, talented writer as well. And so one of his books kind of has some little stories that go with um, some of his pieces that he's painted. And he has a whole series he did of uh, Native American leaders, like kind of portraits of uh, people. And he's, he's just very talented. So we're excited Mike Larson is going to be here with us. 
Um, and that is kind of our wrap on our sneak peek for next year. Bailey's giving us a fist pump. So she, <laughs> she must like the, the PR we're doing today. But seriously, guys, thank, I mean, we appreciate you dropping by the Heritage Center, whether it's one of our event days, whether it's, um, or, or just, you know, you come in and if you are, have questions about membership or about serving as a board member, we or, have some openings. Oh, do, okay, good. That's good to know. Yeah. yeah, we are, we currently have some openings on our board. And if you think you might have a, a little bit of a passion about something like this, or you're just looking for a way to serve the community, um, I mean, here at the Heritage Center, our reach is far beyond just Duncan. And I was going to mention that because they, we have people from Germany, yes, Japan. We have people from all over the world mm -hmm. coming to Duncan to see this facility. True. So, True. Uh, I, you know, it, it's it's a little diamond in the rough here. That is that is exactly right. And by serving as a board member, I mean you have an opportunity to be a part of this. You know. Uh, and to volunteer. And, and to volunteer. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And come to some of these events. Yes. And, and always on event day, we have free admission yep. on those days all day. So um, you'll want to you just mark your calendar. If you have a question, if you miss something, um, call us 252-6692. 580-252-6692 is our number here. And um, I want to just remind you one last time about the benefit for Alan Wooten's family this weekend at the Stevens County Fairgrounds um, from 4 to 10 on Saturday afternoon. And Julie, thank you again. Thank you. You're a pleasure to have on Trail Talk. <laughs> it's always fun when Julie comes to visit us. So um, it's time for us to happy trails. Yeah. All right. Happy, happy trails. trails.